Seth David here from the world-famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about accounting for tips in QuickBooks Online. This has come up a bunch recently. We covered it in my 97 and Up group in detail over an hour. Here I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version of exactly what this looks like. And if we're talking about accounting for tips, it makes sense, although this could apply in other businesses, it makes sense to use the example of restaurant accounting where we do a daily sales reconciliation in order to figure this all out. So you're actually going to see the whole picture in terms of how to come up with your daily sales reconciliation and record that in QuickBooks Online. Let's go to my screen so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. So first things first, there's a formula we have to keep in mind here that we have to follow. And we're going to sketch the transaction out. I've got a template for this. Uh, and we're going to look at a couple of things here. And the, the first thing I want you to take away right now is the basic formula that applies here. And if you can keep this formula in place in your mind as you're trying to do this, all of this is going to make a lot more sense. And the simple formula is sales minus payments equals zero. Right, You add up everything you sold for the day, subtract out all the payments you received. Restaurants don't do things on account. Nobody owes them any money. So we collect 100% of the sales that we make. Right, So sales minus payments equals zero. You start there. And so what we do is we start to accumulate. And whatever POS system you're using is going to give you a, a Z out report at the end of the day, which you should be able to use. And you might have to get familiar with those reports and how they're laid out. They're not always as straightforward as what you're seeing on my screen. And I'm over oversimplifying here for the sake of illustration. You might have a lot more detailed categories than just food and beverage and bar sales and miscellaneous, but that's the only difference is you would just have a lot more line items. The basic structure is going to be the same. So at the end of the day, we need to group our sales in whatever categories we need to to come up with the total, right? Then the one thing that we collect that's not included in sales are of course the tips received, right? So to make this formula more accurate, we'll say sales plus tips minus payments equals zero, right? Now we're talking about the credit card tips that we're likely to receive from our customers throughout the day. The cash tips never pass through the hands of the restaurant. So even though they need to be reported legally, we don't have to reconcile them because we don't see them, right? That goes straight to the server. So all the tips, the cash they received, plus what came through on the credit cards, what we do know about, all needs to get reported on their payroll and how we account for the payroll part of it, another story for another day. So total sales plus tips received equals the total collected. This number has to reconcile with all the payments that we received. And as I said, the tips are probably buried somewhere inside the credit card payments that we have here, right? So bottom line, as long as we can fill out this template for all the different sales that we have, the amount of tips for the day, less all the payments, we should come up with the same number and get a difference of zero. Now here's the other part, is the cash on hand, right? Again, I'm oversimplifying for the sake of illustration. <clears throat> for each register, we have to have an established starting cash amount that we start each register off with each day, right? In the example I'm showing you here, we're starting each register off with $250. And then we've got to have cash back in the vault, especially because we're probably going to need to tip out cash against what we collected on credit cards each day. Right? So we need to have the cash ready so that we can tip our servers out at the end of the night. So we add up what we start with in cash, and that's important from, from the standpoint of being bulletproof, from having a good system of internal controls, that this is established and that it remains consistent. Right? If we need to change it because we don't, we're finding that it's not enough, then we can change it, but it should be documented. In other words, we can't just go willy-nilly and start with whatever cash we happen to have in the register every day way too easy for people to steal cash because it's untraceable. So we need to have a good solid system like this where we know exactly how much we start the day off with and what that adds up to. Then each day at the end of the day we reconcile that. So we take our starting cash plus whatever cash sales we have which we can get from over here less the tips that we had to pay out in cash which we can get from here right? Whatever tips we received is going to be tipped out. Again, this is not the cash tips. This is just the credit card tips or if somebody happened to write a check and include tips in there. Um, whatever we have to tip out in cash has to be subtracted. So, and, and plus, if there were any other kind of payouts, sometimes we'll pay for CODs. Somebody makes a delivery for whatever reason, it's a new vendor or they just don't like us. 
they'll insist on cash on delivery. So we would account for those kind of things here as well. Any other payments that would impact cash. And we get our net cash on hand. And that gets compared with what we're supposed to start the day off with. And that tells us either how much we have to draw from the bank or if we're over our starting cash for the day, then that difference is a drop that needs to be taken to the bank and deposited the next day. Some people are going to say it's overkill, but if you stick to a system like this and, and every day very consistently go to the bank first thing in the morning and take care of either the draw or the drop, then you'll have airtight bulletproof records that will make it very difficult for somebody to steal from you, especially cash, which is the most vulnerable thing, without you detecting it very quickly because this won't reconcile. The longer you go, the harder it's going to be to reconcile this kind of stuff and figure out what day was off or where it was off and what have you. So the best way to do this is to be consistent, to be bulletproof, to exercise overkill and do it the right way every single day. And then you're, you're likely to minimize any problems you have if you have any at all. That's the process. So now let's look at this in terms of QuickBooks Online and how this gets set up. I'm going to move this tab over here so I can keep my eyes on it while we go into QuickBooks Online. So the first thing is we'll need to have a few things set up. We'll need a cash on hand account. Right, So let's just put in a dummy deposit here in these dummy books just to start off our cash on hand with the correct starting amount of 2500 Right, And we don't need necessarily, unless you want to, we don't need to track um, you know, each different register as its own bank account. Just all the cash on hand, we understand from our work papers you know, what's inside of that total, that there's an amount per register plus what's in the vault. Right. If you really wanted to get crazy, you could actually split it here and show it that way. Um, but I don't think it's necessary. All right, so I'm just going to stick this as an opening balance just for the sake of illustration. So we have our starting cash of $500. And what do we say? We're doing this February 21st. So this is our starting cash on February 21st. I'll back it up to the 20th. Okay, and as soon as I start doing things... I really like to start looking at some reports. So let's duplicate my tab. And you'll see when I run this balance sheet that we have a nice clean set of books here. Okay. So that's literally the only thing on the books as of right now is the $2,500. Okay. So that goes into cash on hand. This is what gets reconciled every day with the net amount. So when we're done recording everything that we're going to record, We'll reconcile this with the net cash on hand of $1,600, and then we'll make the transfer from Continental Bank to cash on hand to cover the shortfall, right? Speaking of, let's get, um, let's go into that last deposit. It's one of my favorite features in QuickBooks Online is the recent transactions. Let's go into here and set up Continental Bank with some money. All right, so we'll just put a nice little starting balance in there so that we have something to work with so it doesn't look weird. Um, I just realized that was kind of dumb what I just did. So let's fix that. This effectively took it out of Continental Bank and put it into cash on hand. So I was trying to be efficient. Save a new Continental Bank opening balance. And this is why I like to run a balance sheet and keep my eyes on it as I'm recording things to make sure that I don't do something knuckleheaded like what I just did there. And you also saw how easy that is to fix, which is why I don't edit this kind of stuff out. I want you to learn from it just like I do. So we have starting cash on hand of 2500 We have 100000 in the bank, a continental bank. We're in a good place to uh, get this party started, so to speak. So now we have on my left from our sketch of the day's activities, uh, everything we need to record this. The other things we'll need to set up or make sure we have set up is going to be under products and services. Okay. Uh, let's filter out uh, the stuff we don't need here. So I'll go into the categories and just show the restaurant and retail category. So we'll need an item for bar sales. Again, I'm oversimplifying. You may have much more detailed uh, products and services in here, but again, the structure is not going to change. You're just going to have more of the same kind of stuff, right? So we have bar sales, we have food and beverage, miscellaneous. Let's say we're selling t-shirts or something at the restaurant. So we have a little miscellaneous retail thing. And very important, especially for today's topic, 
the tips received. Now here's how these get set up. Most of these are straightforward. All the sales related items are going to be called whatever they're called and mapped to the appropriate income account. So bar sales is going to liquor sales. This is the income account on your profit and loss. Food and beverage, same idea. This is going to the food and beverage income account also found on your profit and loss. Miscellaneous, this technically should be sales of products, not a service, right? But I don't have this particular company file set up for inventory. So for the sake of illustration, I'm going to leave that alone. This is the important one because this is kind of the tricky one. Tips received, even though this you know theoretically calls for an income account, <clears throat> is not going to an income account. It's not income. We're going to use that dialog, though, to establish that when we use this item, we want it going to tips payable, which is other current liabilities. This is money we collect from our customers. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the servers, right? So that's how these products and services get set up. You just click new and you set up the appropriate type. And the main thing is mapping it to the correct account on your chart of accounts, which as you just saw, most of these go onto the income statement. This one goes to the balance sheet in the form of other current liabilities. Tips received should zero out in theory. The reality is when you're managing day-to-day -day restaurants day in and day out, it's not gonna zero out perfectly. Um, although in, in a course that I would do on this, I would show you how you could actually do a daily reconciliation and it absolutely should get to zero. I can illustrate that probably by the end of this video once we've recorded things. And now that we've got everything in place so that we know we can record this, it's time to record this. And this brings up a common question. What do I record? Should I record a sales receipt or should I record an invoice? The truth is you can do either. I like invoice better because I think using an invoice and then applying separate payments based on the different payment methods is a thousand times cleaner. If you want to use a sales receipt, you'll need to come in here and create more items for the different payment methods that would show up on that sales receipt as negative numbers so that your sales receipt would ultimately zero out. I don't love that way of doing it. So I'm going to do an invoice. Okay, and the date is going to be February 20th. All right, we'll create a customer called Restaurant Sales. All right, so I can just quickly create that on the fly. Save it, I don't really need any details. Okay, and here's where we get the products and services. So coming right off my template, first thing's gonna be food and beverage. And we're just gonna do the amount. Let's call it 1500. All right, bar sales we said was 2,500. And then we'll have miscellaneous. And we said that was gonna be 500 for a total of 4,500. And we're going to save and actually nope, one more thing, tips received. Can't forget that. And that we said was going to be 1,000. Okay, so the grand total is 5,500. If you look at the total collected in my sketch of the transaction, that's also 5,500, so we know we're good there. Okay, save and close. And now we're going to receive payments for each of the payment methods on this. So I'm going to receive payment, and I have restaurant sales. Okay, the date should be the same date, okay. Uh, we're going to put this here. We're going to choose the payment method. So the first one is going to be cash. Okay, and we're going to, if it's cash, we can deposit it into cash on hand, right, for the cash sales. And over here, this is where we have to be careful. It's $100, right? Save and new. Restaurant sales. Okay, next payment method is going to be Visa MasterCard, I don't have that in here, so we'll set it up. And I don't know why that didn't take, let's try again. And I'll refresh, sometimes when these things happen, you just wanna refresh your screen. Restaurant sales, there's my Visa MasterCard. This is going to go to a Visa MasterCard clearing account. Whatever system we're using to process uh, Visa and MasterCard payments, 
there needs to be a clearing account for that. We do not want to put this in cash on hand, so I'm going to create a Visa MC clearing. Okay, because now this should also be a bank account. We can call it cash on hand for the detail type. Because the money goes into here, then we have to clear it out against any fees, and then the difference gets transferred into our bank account. So it's instead of dropping it right into the bank account, it's much cleaner to do it this way. It's a little extra work, but a little extra work goes a long way to, to getting bulletproof books, and that's what we're all about here. So I'll check off the invoice, but the amount received for a Visa and MasterCard is 4500 Okay, save and new. Restaurant sales. <coughs> okay. Payment method is going to be Amex. We'll add that in. Same thing. We want an Amex clearing. We'll add that. Same idea. And this is going to be for 800 Uh, not minus. <laughs> Alright, and save and new, actually. We have one more thing to do here, which is the gift cards, right? And that's probably a subject for another video. Restaurant sales. Over here, we want gift card as a payment method. And that's going to, similar to tips, this is going to go to a liability account. When we sell gift cards, it becomes a liability. We, it's income on the one hand, but the, you know, because we've sold the gift card, but on the, on the other hand, it's it's a liability. It's We're going to have to honor those gift cards when somebody else presents that, right? <coughs> so this is going to go to a gift card liability. <coughs> and we'll set it up as other current assets we can't because of the nature of this because we want to be able to record these deposits to it um, we're limited we can't use a liability account so I'll classify it as other current assets here okay and save and close and notice the balance is down to a hundred that's all that's left and that's exactly what we had for gift card redemptions in our sketch and we save and close Let's go to our balance sheet, which is the videotape. All right, so now we have the 800 in Amex clearing. Cash on hand is 2600 right? Um, because we had the starting of 2500 plus the cash sales of 100 I can click on here and I can see that very clearly, just like you see in the sketch. And we haven't done this part yet. Okay, and then the Visa MasterCard clearing. So again, the, the Visa MasterCard and the Amex clearing, they're gonna we're gonna account for the fees and then we're gonna record those deposits into our bank account, Continental Bank. And you can certainly restructure your bank account section so that these clearing accounts are in their own group. That's what I would actually do. Just trying to save time in the interest of this video. Now we have to record the tips that we paid out, right? So that's simple because we set this up as a bank account called Cash on Hand. I'm just going to record a new uh, expense and that's a little misleading but it's just the transaction type that we use when money is leaving the bank account the payee we can have a generic payee even called servers or something like that right or you can even call it tips okay I just like to have a name associated with everything I don't like to leave the payee blank this is coming out of cash on hand this is going to go against tips payable okay and you could say tips for February 20th, 22, the amount, 1,000, save and close. Okay, cash on hand is down to 1,600. That's our net cash on hand in our sketch, right? And notice tips payable is now zero, and this is what I mean. You could theoretically do a daily reconciliation on this to zero if you have these systems set up and you're actually implementing them, executing them properly. That's the whole key to this. Last thing, 
is then we have a bank draw that we need to start the next day of $900. So how would we record that? First, we have to make sure, and this needs to be built into our systems. We don't want to record anything like this unless we have 100% assurance that somebody has actually gone to the bank and done this. If you record this and it doesn't get done, you have a whole different kind of mess on your hands, right? So first, we have to be 1,000% certain that somebody went to Continental Bank and withdrew $900 in cash and put it in the vault, right? Assuming we have a piece of paper like the, the, you know, the slip that the bank gives you confirming this or, or an online print that, well, you can't do it online because you need to take cash out, right? So you need that little slip of paper that the bank gives you confirming that the cash was withdrawn. And then we can record the transfer. I very rarely like to use transfer as a transaction type because you don't get a lot of context. But in this case, it'll work perfectly. So we'll transfer from Continental Bank to cash on hand, transfer amount, 900, memo, bank, draw, for 22022. These little memos are so incredibly important, especially from the standpoint of being bulletproof from an audit standpoint. It just makes it so clear in six months from now when you're looking at this that this would tie back to this worksheet that you do, and you're going to save these worksheets every day somewhere so that if you ever go back, or and you or anyone is questioning, what did we do? How did we do it? How did we arrive at the numbers we arrived at? You have the audit trail in place. And putting little memos like this, this is your clue for which of these daily sales reconciliations to go back to. And of course, I would rename this each day as I do it for that particular day, and they'd all be stored in a folder, neatly organized in my Google Drive folder. As you can tell, this is being done in Google Sheets. So when I hit save and close, and uh, sorry, Google, I didn't mean you, uh, save and close, sure enough, we are back to our right starting point for cash on hand of $2,500. Continental Bank has a little bit less money in it until these credit card amounts clear into the bank account minus the fees, right? Now, a lot of times these are going to clear in and the fees are pulled out separately directly from your bank account. I would still do it this way just so it's crystal clear. It creates a beautiful audit trail because now I can go in here and see, oh, 4500 was the was the Visa MasterCard payments from... February 20th, and this lines up perfectly. So again, you can do transfers at this point, right? Do them separately, one for Visa, MasterCard, one for Amex. Again, it's extra work, but it keeps things so squeaky clean and makes a big difference. And now I can go into my tips payable account, and I can see very clearly on any given day how we got $1,000 in tips. The invoice is basically reflecting what we received in tips. And here's the tip out that we made in cash at the end of the night. These should absolutely zero out. They often don't. And when they don't, you have to figure out how to clean it up. Oftentimes, you'll have no choice, even though it's far from bulletproof. But you'll have no, because there's no way to trace cash, right? And it's usually too complicated to go back and sort out, you know, all the details. So a lot of times you'll you'll end up plugging this account just to get it a, at a clean starting point. And then going forward, you'll want to implement a system like this that's just so consistent and so crystal clear to make sure that there's never any question uh, about, you know, the tips that were paid in credit cards and other methods besides cash and whether or not and how they were tipped out to the servers. That will also be a reconciling item when you report their payroll because you'll have the tips that you recorded plus the tips that they report in cash, assuming they do that. And uh, the total will come together and be what you report in their W-2s and in their paychecks and so on and so forth. That, my friends, is how to account for tips in QuickBooks Online, as well as a bit of a crash course in retail and restaurant accounting. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Post your questions or comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're on the website, you can comment directly in my website under Nerd Buzz, where this video and the write-up can be found as well. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can with answers to any questions that you may have. As always, I hope you had some fun here. I hope you learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.